Okay, so for number 44, um, they want us to take the triangular region with vertices 0, 0, 1, 0, and 1, 2. So let's go ahead and draw that. So that's 0, 0, 1, 0, and 1, 2. And this does form a triangular region. Um, and so let me just shade that in. They want us, us to take this region and rotate it about a line x is equal to a. And so that is a just a generic line that goes like here. And we're going to call this um, x is equal to a. And so when we rotate it, it's going to give us a volume, right? Um, and so let's think about what happens when we rotate it. Well, we're going to take a point on this line here that connects them. And we're going to look at the height here and take that point and revolve it. So that is going to give us a cylinder, right? And so um, when we add all these cylinders, it's going to give us a volume. And so we can say here that the volume is going to be the sum from, it begins at x is equal to 0 all the way out to x is equal to 1, right? That's the boundaries from 0 to 1. And the cylinder right here, we can think of unwrapping it um, to form an infinitely thin sheet of paper, right? And this infinitely thin sheet of paper that got wrapped around the line x is equal to a, it does have an area. And it's an area as a function of x. Um, because the further and further we move along the x-axis, the, um, the taller that our cylinder is going to be, right? So for example, if I were at here, x is equal to 1, I would take this height here and revolve it like so. And so that would be my cylinder. Uh, I'm just going to remove that so it doesn't get, it doesn't get um, terribly crowded. Okay, and so my volume is going to be the sum from 0 to 1, because these two points are from 0 to 1. And we're summing up all these cylinders here. So AX, DX, we're summing it up across the X axis, right? And so we need to be just be able to express this area in terms of X so that I can integrate. Um, and this is just a rectangle. So my area is going to be base times height. So let's think about um, what our base is and what our height is. Um, well, our height, maybe I should do that in a different color. So our height is going to be all the points in this line right here. So we take we take a point here and we look at the height of it. So it's actually, it's the curve that connects the point 0, 0 to the point um, 1, 2. Not curve, rather it's a straight line. And we're just looking at the height of the function at a particular point. So actually this is going to be an f of x, right? And we have to figure out what the line, what this line is, because that is the line that defines my height. Um, and this is just a straight line of the form y is equal to mx plus b. And remember that this line it connects the points 0, 0 and the points 1, 2. So m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And so that is equal to 2 minus 0 over 1 minus 0, which is equal to 2. So y is equal to 2x plus b, and b is the y-intercept. But the y-intercept is 0, right? It begins exactly at um, y is equal to 0. And so our line is just y is equal to 2x. And so we can see here that every single point that gets revolved, right, it touches this curve, y is equal to 2x. It's the height of that line, and it gets revolved. And so we can see here that the height is just going to be 2x. That's the, the line that defines it. And so let's think now about our base. Um, well, our base is going to be the base of the cylinder right here. It's going to be this guy. And we can see that this is a circumference, right? So the circumference is given by 2 pi r. But we don't want it in terms of r. Um, we do want it in terms of x. So let's think about how we are going to do it. Do it. Um, and actually, I'm going to erase all this stuff and make it a little bit cleaner for us because I'm going to use a different point. So let's think about what happened if I were rotating the very end point, right? And x is equal to 1. I'm going to rotate it like here, and I'm going to rotate it like here. Um, and so my circumference is this, this part, right? Like so. And I'm over here at x is equal to 1. So what's my radius? Well, my radius goes from a all the way out to that point, 1, right? 
but it's not a distance of one because one is measured from zero all the way out here. So actually, um, the, the length that goes from a to one, it goes a distance of a minus a distance of one. So it goes a minus one, right? Um, that is how I'm going to get my my radius that goes from here all the way out to that point one. And so generically speaking, um, if I were further along, let me erase that. If I were further along, maybe at x is equal to one half. Well, this radius, it would go from a all the way out to one half, right? So, and clearly this is not the distance of one half because one half is measured from this side on. And so one half is very tiny. We don't have a tiny radius. We have something that's bigger. So in this case, it would ju just be a minus one half. So the pattern here follows that the radius is a minus x, wherever the value of x is, right? Um, and so once I have this, I can now substitute it back in that my circumference is two pi times the radius, which is a uh, a minus x. Okay, so now I have base and I have height, and so my area is base times height, which is 2 pi, that's our base, right, a minus x, times height, which is 2x, um, which is equal to 4 pi, and that is a x minus x squared. So once I have this, this is my expression a of x. I can now put this into my integral, right? And so my volume is going to be the integral from 0 to 1. Um, 4 pi goes outside because it's a constant. And that is a x minus x squared and all of this times dx. So um, we can now take the antiderivative. So that is equal to 4 pi times a x squared over 2 minus x cubed over 3 and all of this from 0 to 1 which is equal to um, 4 pi times let's see a over 2 minus 1 third um, yeah a over 2 and that is our volume right but actually they don't want the volume they want us to express a in terms of v so we're actually going to have to isolate a right so we're going to take this and we're going to first divide everything by 4 pi. So we have that v over 4 pi is equal to a over 2 minus 1 third. Then I'm going to add 1 third to both sides. So I have v over 4 pi plus 1 thirds is equal to a over 2. And then I'm going to multiply everything by 2. So I have, um, so this would be v over 2 pi plus two thirds is equal to a. Uh, yeah, and that is my a in terms of v. So let me just go back so you guys can see the whole process. We basically, um, we took this triangular region, we revolved it about the line x is equal to a, we found that the height is defined by this line that connects 0, 0 and 1, 2. Um, we unwrapped it, found the area of each of these cylinders, added them up, found the volume, and then lastly, we expressed A in terms of the volume.